The Marriage Ministry presents Preparing for Marriage God's Way. A successful marriage requires quality preparation and revelation from God. So join us and uncover the ways that marriage can become a doorway to a closer walk with God and with each other. The winter session of this virtual premarital course will begin on Saturday, February 26th. Register today by texting the word marriage to 240-201-3300. Kingdom family, join us throughout the month of April as we occupy and celebrate the grand opening of our brand new Kingdom Worship Center. Two years of prayer, two years of giving, Two years of serving to the glory of God. Make sure to come out to our Good Friday service on April 15th and Easter Sunday services on April 17th. Later in the month, join us on April 29th for a consecration service with Bishop T.D. Jakes and gospel recording artist Hezekiah Walker. On April 30th, join us for our special dedication service of the Kingdom Worship Center and groundbreaking of the Kingdom Care Center with preaching from Bishop James LaVert Davis and guest psalmist Jonathan Nelson. And on May 1st, don't miss our first Holy Communion Sunday service with Bishop John Bryant. It's going to be a historic celebration you don't want to miss. Are you ready to occupy? Praise the Lord, Kingdom Fellowship. This is the day the Lord has made. We've come to rejoice and to be glad in it. I want you to get up on your hands, on your feet that is, and clap your hands.
I'm Reverend Russ, super excited that you decided to join us here at Kingdom Fellowship AME Church. I don't know about you, uh, but I am excited to see this second Sunday in the month of March that our Lord has given us. Not only am I excited because we're going into uh, week two of our pastor series uh, called Necessary Endings, and I don't know about you, but there are several things that I need to end in my life, and I'm excited about our pastor coaching us through this series. But also, on this second Sunday, we celebrate our Kingdom Cares ministry. Many of you know that we feed thousands of people every week through our Kingdom Cares ministry, and on today, uh, we are celebrating a new website for our Kingdom Cares ministry. And so you can go to our website at kingdom.global for more information, or you can go to the website that you see printed here right under my face. And we are excited about that website and all of the ways that we serve, but more importantly, all of the ways that you can partner with us to serve. And you can partner with us whether you're in the DMV or if you are worldwide, we are kingdom.global. Right now, let me stop and shout out all of our guests. If you are a guest here for the first time or returning time, not yet a member of Kingdom Fellowship, want you to text the words Kingdom Guest to the number that you see below uh, the screen even right now so that we can be in contact with you. I was talking a couple weeks back with, with a member that we have in the Florida area and she's excited about coming for our Occupy next week and I'm super, well next month rather, and I'm super excited for all of you who are worshiping all over, not again just the DMV, but all over over the country and yet all over the world. Uh, as we move forward, we know we have several things to pray for, for our country and for our world. Let us go ahead and start to pray even right now. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we come to say thank you. We thank you, God, for your grace, God, for your mercy, God, for your kindness unto us. Pray now, God, that you will not just cover Kingdom Fellowship, God, but you'll cover every church, Lord God, that lifts the name of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord God, that you'll cover every city, God, cover every state, God, cover every area, Lord God, that we may be able to focus in on you. God, we pray, God, for our pastor, Pastor Watley, God, and our first family, the Watley family, God, we pray that you'll cover them, Lord God, and keep them, God, as they direct us and move us forward. But now, God, we pray for this worship experience, God. We thank you for the brothers who opened us up in praise and worship, God, and we thank you, God, for the worship that will be yet to come, and we thank you, God, for the word that will come, God, that someone will get saved, that someone will rededicate, that someone will make a decision to get closer with you. But God, at the end of the day, God, we pray, Lord God, that through this worship experience, God, you get all the glory. God, you get all the honor, God, because you deserve all of the praise. God, bless us on today as we move forward, God, with kingdom-focused lives. In Jesus' name we pray. We all said amen. Amen and amen. Again, uh, if you are worshiping with us from anywhere uh, in the country, don't forget uh, to text the words Kingdom Guest if you're a first time guest, but also uh, invite somebody with you to join you in worship now. You still have time to invite them. It's going to be a great word on today. And now let's go to our Kingdom Fellowship worship song, our welcome song Gather, Grow, Give, Go. 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 We are kingdom fellowship. We're kingdom focused. We gather to 
Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing. We are glad in it. We are excited about all the wonderful things that God is doing in the midst of his people here called Kingdom Fellowship. God has been so good to us. Not only do we have an amazing church, but God has blessed us to have our own CDC, the Kingdom Community Development Corporation, and they're doing some awesome and amazing thing. That's the parent body for all that we invest in our Kingdom Cares um, outreach ministry. And I just want to uh, take a pause so you can see uh, something that has come of our Kingdom Cares work. Go ahead and check it out. Before COVID-19, I was a very active person. I like going to museums. Uh, I like to travel. And with, with COVID, it kind of brought everything to a halt. Since COVID, I have been more homebound. I have asthma and chronic bronchitis. So with COVID, I have to be a little bit more cautious than the average person. When they first start talking about people will be able to get the vaccine, that they had all these websites and places that you can go, and I could never get an appointment. And I was supposed to be one of the people they were trying to get vaccinated because of my pre-existing uh, medical condition. It seems as if they just made it difficult for some people. Kingdom Fellowship had made an announcement that they were gonna partner with the hospital to see if they could get their members and the community surrounding the church vaccinated. It was a very easy and convenient process and I'll be forever grateful because I don't know, without the church, I don't know if I would have had the vaccine. After I've received the vaccine, I have more peace of mind that I know I am protected. It gives me peace of mind knowing that I won't die from COVID. I'm hopeful that eventually we'll go back to our days before COVID, as I call it, BC. Uh, we'll go back to BC where we can get together and fellowship and enjoy each other.
Well, isn't that awesome? Isn't that amazing? We're so grateful to God uh, for uh, Reverend Kendra Smith, who's doing an amazing job and providing leadership in our efforts and our partners and Gibify and other partnerships. And we're just excited about what God is doing. Listen, we have a quarterly conference coming up uh, on Monday, uh, March the 14th. So make sure that you tune in and you see what's happening uh, in the life of our church. I'm going to ask your prayers for several members of our faith family recently who have lost uh, loved ones. I'm going to be asked that you be in prayer for for brother Kevin Washington uh, who passed he was one of our members we ask that you'd be in prayer for his family as well as sister Taria Anderson uh, whose father made his transition as well as sister Camille uh, Critton who lost her mother also be in prayer for our own uh, Reverend Loxie O'Connor whose brother uh, made his transition and he's in Jamaica uh, with his family uh, saying goodbye now in fact let's just pause and pray father in the name of Jesus we ask your choice blessings upon each of these families whose whose names that we've called and others who we're not able to call at this moment we pray God that you might send your angels of comfort your angels that can provide strength to carry these family members through these next days as the spirit of grief and mourning is so heavy upon them God grant them to know that the old phrase is true truly earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal so God allow them to go through the process of grief and, and walk with them and allow us as their church family to support them in Jesus name amen amen well in the midst of that there still is life and there are some life changing things happening in the life of our church certainly you already know that we are now officially in our countdown season for our occupied 2020 as we move forward into our new kingdom worship center let's listen pay quick attention because uh, i want you to make sure that you are a part of all that's happening our last sunday in the sanctuary here at tech road is going to be the first sunday in may and so i'm encouraging you to come on out and to say one more goodbye make one more victory lap around the sanctuary and let's thank God for what the Lord has done in this place that last that first Sunday in the month of May will be our la I'm sorry April will be our last Sunday uh, here and then that second Sunday of course uh, is going to be Palm Sunday and we're going to do what's called a soft open we want to make sure that our ministry systems are up and right and ready and so let me just pause right here and ask if you've yet to, ex to accept my invitation to get involved in ministry please my brother please my sister consider doing that we want to make sure that we go in right and that we're ready to receive our new brothers and sisters in the family of faith so that Palm Sunday will be our soft open we're not going to make it fully open to everybody so when we make that registration link available I want to encourage you to stop whatever you're doing and click it so that you can make sure that you're a part uh, of that experience on Palm Sunday and then of course we'll be, gonna be having our Good Friday service in our new Kingdom Worship Center as well it's going to be awesome and amazing you want to be a part of that and then of course on Easter it will be our grand opening amen and we're looking forward to celebrating our Savior in our new sanctuary of course at the end of the month of April we'll be having our official consecration and dedication services on that Friday night we'll be having none other than Bishop T.D. Jakes as well as Bishop Hezekiah Walker amen they're going to be in the house on that Saturday morning we'll have our own Bishop Bishop James Lavert Davis is going to be preaching and we'll have uh, gospel recording artist Jonathan Nelson in the house we're going to cut the ribbon on our Kingdom Worship Center and then we're going to go across the parking lot and break the ground on our Kingdom Care Center amen we're going to have a number of uh, county and state officials along with us and I certainly want to encourage you to be a part of it there's one more opportunity I want to share with you and that is that we're going to be having a special commemorative uh, journal uh, to acknowledge this historic moment in the life of our church it's going to be uh, like a one of those table uh, coffee table books it's going to be the hard uh, soul uh, hardback book and it's going to provide us the opportunity to thank God for what God has done. If you or your business would like to be a part of it, uh, you can follow the information and, and be a part of that. Amazingly, this past week, I got a package from my father. My father's old school, and he's gonna keep the post office open by himself. Every week I get letters and packages from him, and this package was very special. Uh, it had in it uh, what looked like uh, an old school uh, bulletin. It was, it was thick, it had uh, a cover on it, and it was uh, at the bottom of the, the page on the front cover, it said Pastor Matthew Watley. 
it, it wasn't me. It was my grandfather, Pastor Matthew Allen Watley. And it was from the commemorative journal from when he accepted the uh, call to uh, go to a church called Price Chapel in Los Angeles that had burned down. The bishop gave him an appointment to a church that did not have a building. And the bishop told him, if you want, you don't have to say yes. But he said yes, they found a space. That church is still standing. And that, that book was a reminder of what God had done in that congregation. As you know, we're not putting any names on walls or pews or anything, but this can serve as a memorial and a reminder and commemoration for you and your family. Many of us were kingdom builders and we gave sacrificially uh, at a major level and none of us got credit for it because you know what the Bible says. The Bible says when you give so that people can see it, you've already got your credit. Amen. But this is something different. This is a memorial for what God has done and we are acknowledging. So if you'd like to be a part of that, we certainly welcome you to do so feel no burden to participate in all of that just wanted to give you the context for what uh, we're doing in that moment we are grateful to God that we're able to move forward in this effort because of the faithful tithes and offering of the people here called Kingdom Fellowship it's time to give and we're excited that we have it to give amen so I want to encourage you to give as God has blessed you. you see the means of giving available on the screen and rather than you naming the amount but beyond your tithe because we know that tithing is the basis of what we give I encourage you to seek the face of God in your giving and I certainly want to invite you to become a tither to, to complete your kingdom builders pledge or to sow into our kingdom cares ministry let's just pause and pray Father in the name of Jesus we thank you oh how we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy toward us we pray now that you might grant us a spirit not just to give but to give generously and cheerfully and we thank you and we pray that you'll bless both gift and giver in Jesus name amen well brothers and sisters I'm all excited about this new sermon series I'm in today come on y'all let's have church of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of salvation to everyone to everyone that Oh, 
take you all the way to glory. Set the captives free. Set the captives free. we do so I'm just going to ask that right 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 now wherever you are you would just pause as we go before the mercy seat and throne of God together in prayer father in the name of Jesus we thank you for the saving gospel of Jesus Christ we thank you that while we were yet sinners you sent Christ to die for us and because God he was willing to make of himself of no reputation and take on the form of a slave and make himself obedient unto death, even death on the cross. We therefore, God, glory in his sacrifice and in the new life that he provides for us. Therefore, God, we refuse to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We, we will not apologize for our love for you, our commitment to you and to your word, even when it does not agree with what the world says. God, if we have to stand by ourselves, we'll stand on the sure foundation, Christ, the solid rock. Because God, we know that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. 
we clamor, we desire to hear from heaven right now. So God, still every distraction, take away anything that would take our focus off of what you want to say to the church and allow us to have faith sufficient to receive your word and to move forward. And God, get the glory now for yourself. And we promise to praise you. It's in Jesus' name we want to say thank you. And all God's children said, amen. Well, brothers and sisters, I am excited to continue uh, the message that we started on last week throughout uh, this entire month of April. We're going to be preaching about necessary endings as we are saying goodbye to 12101 Tech Road. God certainly has been good to us in this place. God has done some amazing and miraculous things in this sanctuary, and we would be ungrateful if we did not press the pause button and say thank you for God's goodness and mercy toward us in this place. We also recognize in order for us to have a new beginning, we've got to end this thing well. And so for that purpose, I want to direct your attention to the gospel according to Luke, the ninth chapter, beginning reading at the 57th verse. Luke's gospel, the ninth chapter, beginning reading at the 57th verse there. These words are recorded. And let me just, before I read it, let me just explain to you what's going on. uh, Because actually in Luke's gospel, the ninth chapter, it is a parallel to what Matthew talks about in the eighth chapter of his gospel, beginning at the 18th verse. Matthew's gospel refers to two individuals, uh, would-be disciples of Jesus that approach Jesus. The first man uh, asks him, teacher, uh, says to him, teacher, I'll follow you wherever you want to go. And Jesus responds is clear. Uh, Foxes have holes. The birds of the air have nests. The son of man has no place to lay his head. And then in uh, the second person comes and Jesus actually extends the invitation to him, says to him, follow me. That those words are important. Y'all know that's how those those 12 disciples got to be disciples just by responding to that two word prophetic, powerful invitation. Follow me. But the Bible says the man responded to him saying, well, let me first go and say goodbye to my family. And, and, and no, let me say, let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. What's interesting is Matthew's gospel and Luke's gospel record the exact same thing about these first two men. But then Luke gives us a third man that inter- interacts with Jesus. And that's what I want to talk about. So let's go ahead and begin in Luke, the ninth chapter at the fifth, seventh verse. It says, as they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, foxes have holes and birds of air have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, and this is the third man, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. And and so since Matthew and Luke both talk about these first two guys, and Luke is the only one that talks about the third guy, that's what I want to talk about for our time together. For the time that is yours and mine, I just want to preach about the third man. The third man. Amen. But brothers and sisters, what I like about this third man as presented in Luke's gospel is that he actually is a combination of the first two men. The first man in Matthew and Luke's gospel uh, actually uh, makes the expression that he wants to follow Jesus. Here's what he says one more time. Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And that's that's significant. That's important because he is expressing a free will volitional choice to follow Jesus. And and of course, that's great. The third man uh, starts off like the first man. He says, I will follow you. All right. But then notice the second man in both of the other gospels, uh, he, he he's they're given an invitation to follow Jesus. But they have a concern. Lord, let me go and bury my my dad. Jesus response is clear. Let the dead bury the dead. And likewise, the third man, he seems to have a hang up. He says, I will follow you like the first man. But then he says, but let me go and say goodbye to my family. So that's why I say the third man really is like a combination of the first two men. And the reason I wanted to kind of stop here is because I believe, listen to me, that the third man really represents you and I. Think about it, if you will. The third man is a man who is in transition. 
He's literally trying to follow Jesus. He's trying to get closer to Jesus, but he's got some issues. Now, I don't know why y'all sitting there so quiet looking at me like Alice in Wonderland. The truth of the matter is you and I are the third man or the third woman. We're all trying to follow Jesus. We're trying to get closer to Jesus. Ah, but tell the truth, we got some we got some issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and as a congregation, we're in transition as well, right? We're leaving 12101 Tech Road in Silver Spring, and we're heading over to 11710 Beltsville Drive in Calverton. And, and I pray, listen, brothers and sisters, that we're not approaching this as if we're merely changing our physical location. But I would contend that God has given us this season that we might move into a new existential location. Uh, in other words, I, I'm trying to get you to understand that I believe God is providing for us who are connected to this church called Kingdom the opportunity to really recommit ourselves to following Jesus and getting closer to Jesus so that we can live a life that we've never lived before. Okay, let's be clear. This move that we're about to make, it's going to be a good move. I mean, it's a nice space. I just walked there today. It's a nice space. We got Italian marble on the floor. We had this beautiful glass entrance that was designed by a company in Germany, and, and the, the, the metal was sourced out of China, and the, the glass was fashioned in Tunisia. I mean, it's a beautiful place. We got all kinds of video screens and state-of-the-art technology, and, and that's all right because that's how it was in, in Scripture. The Bible tells us that when the, 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 the children of Israel went to make the tabernacle when they were in the wilderness, God caused them to use fine stones and the best of materials materials and silver and gold that the temple was made of the best of what they could offer because it was a reflection of how they felt about God. And, and, and so I'm just trying to get you to understand that it's good that we have this beautiful place, but don't you move over just so that you can have some nice lights and enjoy some luxury living. Don't, don't rob yourself of the opportunity because the Bible says, what does it profit a person to gain the whole world and lose their soul? I, we, we didn't spend all this money just so we could have a nicer place to worship God. We, we made this investment because we want to have a greater base of ministry operation. We want to have a place where people will be inspired when they come into the doors to have a new relationship with God and see what God can do in and through their lives. So I'm declaring right here and right now that this ought to be a time of transition in your own life. A time of transition when you move to a new level in your faith and in your family and in your finances. God is preparing you for a future that you couldn't have without this time. Did, did you catch that? See, see, here's what I've discovered and learned about life. In life, listen, you are only given a handful of choices that ultimately determine the quantity of your life and the quality of your life. Where you go to school, what you choose is your career. Lord knows who you choose to be in a relationship with, how you choose to spend your money, and most of all, how you exercise your faith. And I need you to know that God has given to us an inflection moment that will ultimately determine the trajectory of your destiny. Let me pause right there. See, if you actually look back at your life, there are just a few decisions that you made and then there were years and years that came after the decision that you then had to live out the results and the consequences of that decision. There are very few opportunities to have inflection moments. Okay, let me put it like this. It's like when you're on the highway and you recognize uh, that you're going in the wrong direction, but you can't find no exit. I got good news. Come April 17th, 2022, God is giving you an exit ramp. God has given you an opportunity to stop living like you've been living and stop like, acting like you've been acting and learn to live at a new level in him. Y'all, th this is a special time. God is doing something special amongst this people. 
I don't want you to play cheap what God has done in this place called Kingdom Fellowship. God, God has, has caused people to make some supernatural decisions that had great consequence for their life. People have left their careers and come out of retirement to work and serve here at Kingdom. People have moved from other states just so they can be a part of this ministry. People have stayed here and, and taken the opportunity to let some opportunities go because they were committed to what God was doing in here. New businesses have been formed because what is preached from this pulpit and careers have been put back on track and relationships have been mended and people have discovered how they can have joy in their single life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is doing something magical. God is doing something miraculous. God is doing something momentous and I don't want you to miss your moment. Because I believe God is just getting started. Uh-huh. See, 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 y'all, this is a special season. Somebody shout special season. And the stakes are high. In fact, the stakes are as high for us as they were for that third man. Let me go on, Jay, back to my text. The Bible tells us in Luke that, that this man, this third man, uh-huh, volunteers to follow Jesus but seemingly he does so, watch this, without due consideration. See, see he seems to be saying, Jesus, I, I want to follow you, but first let me say goodbye to my family. And, and that's sort of similar to the first man. We, we talked about him. Uh, I, I'm ready, God. I'm ready to follow you. And Jesus is like, you ain't ready. You don't even know what you're saying. Look how Jesus responds to the first man. Foxes have holes. Birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. In other words, but brother, you say you're going to follow me anywhere, but look at how I'm living. I don't know from day to day where I'm going to stay or how I'm going to make it. I live fully dependent on God to provide for me what I need when I need it. Are you sure you're ready to follow that? In other words, brothers and sisters, I believe Jesus is suggesting that this man, the first man, like the third man, may not have given due consideration to what he's saying. Let me say this to you, brothers and sisters. Impulse is often the forerunner of regret. Wake up and write it down. I said impulse is often the forerunner of regret. That, 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 that probably why major life decisions uh, that we make, they actually have language developed to make sure we have given it due consideration. When, when you go to say, I do, and get married, when you go to write your will out and do estate planning, when you say you're going to commit yourself to public service, when, when, when you go into ordained ministry, there's always a formal uh, uh, language that says to you, are you sure? that you've given proper consideration to this and you're saying yes without any sense of reservation or coercion? In other words, brothers and sisters, so many times we don't think stuff through until we get into stuff and then can't get out. And maybe, just maybe, the reason God is not able to do more in our lives is because we've not put the investment in to make sure that we're sure about the decisions that we say we're making towards him. And that's why I love God. Can I preach like I want to? Because God is the only one I know that puts the fine print in big print. Uh -huh. you, you know how you go on a website and, and before they let you go any further, they, you, they, you got to click this thing that says, I agree. And ain't nobody watching me right now ever scroll through all that stuff they want you to read. And, and they're depending on you not reading it because if you don't read it, you're going to end up signing some rights and privileges away that, that you actually are, are going to not benefit from. But with Jesus says, I ain't trying to have nobody tricked into the kingdom. I want you to understand up front what you're getting into. Here it is, Luke 14. Jesus breaks it down like a fraction. He gives us the fine print up front. He says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That's some fine print for you, ain't you? Then, then he begins to talk about uh, uh, how when there is, you got to count the cost before you make a decision. He says, because if a man goes to build the tower without 
counting the cost. He may find himself not being able to complete the project and then everybody will come and laugh at him. It's like a king who goes to battle without first factoring how many troops he can command and if he does not have the requisite number, he'll try to negotiate a peace because he recognizes he's not in proper position. He's not done what he, ne he needs to do. What's your point? Here's my point. That maybe the reason our faith is not fruitful is because we have shallow roots. Because we've not taken the time or made the effort to dig deeply into our own hearts to discover and decide how much Christ is really worth for us. Can I ask you? How much is Christ worth to you? Is he worth you sacrificing your popularity with people to stand on what God's word says, even though it's not popular with the culture? I need to know what is Christ worth to you? Y'all getting kind of quiet now. Uh -huh. Is Christ worth a generous portion of your time and your talent and your treasure, or does God just get the leftovers? Is, is Christ worth you declaring, for God I live and for God I die? All I'm trying to get you to see, my brothers and sisters, is that this third man, like the first man, seems to have an issue that he's not properly considered what he said. But that's only half the problem. He says to Jesus, uh, I, I want to follow you, but first, uh -huh, let, let me go and bury I mean, let me go and say goodbye to my family. Now, the question you're asking is the question I ask myself. Well, what's wrong with that? There ain't nothing wrong with wanting to say goodbye to my family. And hear what I'm about to show you, my brothers and sisters. There's absolutely nothing wrong with what the man's saying, except in context, it's an indication that he's following Jesus half-heartedly. Jesus just told you the price of discipleship. Whoever doesn't hate mother or father, sister or brother, it cannot be my disciple. Now, obviously, Jesus is not anti-family. Jesus is clearly pro-family. But he is anti-anything or anti-anyone that takes priority or precedent over him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then your family and your friends and your finance, all that stuff, I'll then fix and add it unto you. I need somebody in here that knows that God honors those that prioritize, that put him first. Uh-huh. He, he, he says, I, I want to go bury my family. I, mean, I want to go say goodbye to my family. And, and Jesus is like, hold on, brother. He, he, the, the one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. In other words, even though you're saying with your mouth you're ready to go, you're also saying that you're ready to stay. That you've not fully given yourself over to following me where I'm trying to take you. You know, it's been said that the hardest choices in life are not between good and bad, but between two good things. I want to amend that statement and say I would suggest that the hardest choice in life is actually to choose not between two good things, but between a good thing and a God thing. See, here's what I've discovered. A good thing is clear. A, a good thing, it shows you what it's going to bring to your life. A, a God thing can be good, but it also has a little murkiness. It's a little risky. It's a little sketchy. I wish I had somebody in here who's ever had to choose a God thing over a good thing. A, a, a good thing is, is comfortable. A good thing is logical. A good thing is practical. A good thing is incremental. But, but a God thing can seem crazy to the ungodly. A God thing is, all, is never fully finished. A, a God thing is not guaranteed. A God thing requires you to embrace risk. The, the reason we stay stuck and don't end some stuff is not because it's so great. It's just so comfortable. Uh -huh. uh, our darling daughter, Alexandra, is growing like a weed. And, and as a consequence, we finally are, are always in the position of having to get new pants and new shoes. And so we got her some new shoes. And she was so excited because she liked the look. But when she got them home, she said, Daddy, I don't like these shoes. What don't you like about the shoes? But Daddy, they hurt my feet. And I had to explain to her. Y'all know what I had to tell her, don't you? Baby, that's because those shoes are new. 
you got to wear those shoes for a while. You got to break those shoes in for a while. And if you keep wearing them for a while, that they'll get real comfortable. Guess what? That there's a whole lot of folks. God's got some new shoes and your shoes done run over. But because they're so comfortable, you walking out with your feet looking crazy. Can I preach like I want to? I'm trying to help somebody in this house to understand at some point we've got to recognize that God has more, that God has greater, that God has better. But we've got to be willing to get rid of some comfortable shoes. This is the season that God is challenging us to make some God decisions. Uh huh. And God decisions don't always make sense. I, I, can, can I testify since we going back? Uh, I, I recall when we first started Reed Temple North at Bl Montgomery Blair High School on Easter of 2006. And, and, and the Lord blessed us. People were coming. And I remember after several months seeing a, a couple that I knew from Reed Temple back at Good Luck Road in Lanham, Maryland. Uh, a brother and sister Montgomery. I remember walking up to Sister Martha Montgomery after a service and saying, uh, Sister Montgomery, don't, 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 don't take offense at what I'm about to ask you, but, but I just got curious. You, you know, we just finished our Glendale campus just a year and a half ago, and, and it seems to me that since you've been a member of Reed Temple so long, and since you and your husband have given so much to make that sanctuary happen, I just got to know, why is it that you chose to walk up in a cafeteria in a high school rather than going to the church that you invested in? And, and, and Stack, she said to me, well, you know, Reverend, uh, this place is 10 minutes from my house. I, I said, yeah, but they got stained glass over there and they got an organ over there and they got pews over there. She said, maybe you didn't hear what I said. <laughs> this place is 10 minutes from my house. And really what I discovered down through the years was it was about more than just the easy commute. What she was saying is because you're closer to me, I can be more actively engaged in ministry. God can use me like he can use me. If I got to travel across town every time, I got to use my gifts. I didn't realize it, but God had put her and her husband in this sanctuary and in this congregation to serve as a support and to be a loyal protector for those who were trying to come for me sometimes. You're not hearing what I'm saying. I'm trying to tell Tell you that when you follow God it may not make sense to others uh, it may not look like it makes sense on paper but if God says it it's going to be to your benefit it's going to be a blessing to you eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered let, let, let me let me cut across the field the Bible says that, that this man this third man somebody shout this third man this third man comes to Jesus and he makes this statement. Uh, I want to follow you, but just let me go and say goodbye to my family. Notice Jesus' response. He, he says, you, you can't be a part of the kingdom if you put your hand to the plow and look back. Hear the imagery of a farmer who is preparing a field for planting in order that he might reap a harvest. In other words, in order to get the full maximum potential out of that field, he's first got to break up what has become standard. He's got to break up the default position of the dirt. He's got to plow into it. He's got to get up under the surface and get past that dry stuff on top, that, 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 that brown stuff on top, and get to that deep, rich, moist stuff up underneath and turn it up. He's saying if, if you're going to be a part of the kingdom, the kingdom is about harvest, but you can't get a harvest if you plow and looking backwards. You're not hearing me. I'm trying to tell y'all, kingdom, God is trying to reconfigure and restructure some relationships in this season. God is trying to reconfigure and restructure your vision and your purpose so you can stop competing for crumbs and you can own the whole bakery. God is trying to reconfigure and reconstruct your goals so your seed doesn't produce a plant, but your seed produces a crop. Okay, I'm going to try it again. Bible says that this man is plowing and he says in order to be a kingdom plower, you got to look forward. So the purpose of the plow is to make the ground ready for the seed. 
And you know how seeds work, don't you? The purpose of a seed, watch this, is to reimagine and repurpose and reorder the elements that are around it. I'm going to try it again. Seeds don't make trees. Seeds take what is available and reorder to make trees. Okay, see, seeds talk to the sun and say, I appreciate you being bright. But, but if you work with me, I can build something with your brightness. Uh, seeds talk to the dirt and say, I appreciate you on the ground. But how long are you going to stay at this level? Uh, if you let me work with you, uh, I'll build something that brings you up beyond where you are. Seed talks to the water and talks to the wind uh, and says, I see what you're doing, but, but I see more potential in you. If you just let me get a hold of you and reorder you, I'm going to bring something that brings a sweet fragrance in the air. I'm going to bring something that puts fruit and sweetness in somebody else's mouth. You're not hearing what I'm saying. I'm trying to show you that the reason God is blessing this place uh, is because this is a place uh, where the seed of the word of God is planted. And when those who have a heart to receive the word, uh, the word begins to reimagine uh, and begins to reorder uh, what my life looked like uh, before God got a hold of me. Who am I preaching to? Uh, is there anybody here that can testify? Uh, it wasn't the DJ that saved my life. It was the word of God that saved my life. The word of God saw me heading in the wrong direction. The word of God saw me struggling in life. And the word of God told me that there's more in me than what I've experienced so far. Look at somebody real quick and say, neighbor, come on, say neighbor. You can't be in the kingdom looking back you got to look forward with great expectation you got to look forward to the one that declares behold I do a new thing you got to look forward don't look back and when you get through looking forward then look up lift up your eyes to the hills from which cometh your help all of your help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Don't look back. Look forward. Look up. And then look beyond. Beyond where you've been. Beyond where your family's from. Beyond your experience. God says, I've got more in store. Do you believe it? Do you receive it? Say it. Say yeah. Yeah, not yet. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible says that this man was the third man. I'm in my seat when I tell you the spiritual significance of the third man. You see, we serve a Trinitarian God. He's God the Father. That is God the Creator, the Maker of heaven and earth. He's God the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that overshadowed Mary that she might have the Immaculate Conception. And she gave birth to the third man of the Godhead. Does anybody know his name? I wish somebody would tell me his name. What's his name? Jesus is the third man. Y'all not happy. The Bible says that one day Jesus took Peter, James, and John up to a mountain. And when he got to the mountain, a man by the name of Moses, who represented the law, showed up. A man by the name of Elijah, who represented Represented the prophets uh, showed up. Uh, Moses was there. Uh, Elijah was there. Uh, Jesus uh, was the third supernatural man. Uh, and Peter looked around uh, and said, Master, uh, we got everything we need uh, right up here. Uh, it is good uh, that we should be here. Uh, but Peter's problem uh, was that he was going to settle uh, for a good thing rather than a God thing. Uh, Jesus said, uh, we can't stay up here because there's work to do down in the valley not here up on the mountain look at somebody and say neighbor I'm so glad that Jesus is the third man ask me how I know because one Friday on a hill called Golgotha there were three crosses. There was a thief on the left 
and he said to Jesus if you are the son of God you ought to come down and when you get down you ought to bring me down he was just trying to go back to his good thing but the other thief said man shut your mouth we're getting what we deserve but this man has done nothing wrong master when you come into your kingdom remember me and Jesus because he was the third man said today you'll be with me in paradise so long kingdom may the Lord God bless you real good the third man hung there for your sins and mine the third man died and dropped his head in the locks of his shoulders he died on Friday that was the first day he was still dead on Saturday that was the second day but early Sunday morning that third day the third man got up with all power in his hands and because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives say yeah say yeah 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 He's just giving me a better life. A life that I could not attain without him. And I want you to know that's the life that he offers to you right now. If you are unsaved, unsure, 
who Jesus is and what he can do in your life. If you're unsaved, never accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior, I got good news. Today is the day of salvation. All you need to do is accept him in your heart and he'll say to you what he said to that second thief. Today, you'll be with me in paradise. If you're unsaved or unsure, then the, then the invitation for salvation is available to you right now. Just reach out to the information on the screen. And if you're here, you're watching me and you're already saved, but you don't have a church home, we are growing and getting stronger. But by now you should understand, you can't Google your way to God and get it on your own. You gotta be a part of the body of Christ, which is called the church. If you're a dismembered believer, if you're saved, but you're not connected to the body, then I want to encourage you. We want to graft you in right now. Reach out to the inf information on the screen. We'd be happy to have you in the house. If you need to rededicate your life to Christ, fell off, drifted away, it's time to come back to God. He's waiting with open arms. Whoever you are, wherever you are, reach out as well. Come on right now. You ought to know him. You ought to know him. Hallelujah. Get to know him. Get to know him. Right now. Right now. Today. Today. Just, just come. Come on, let's sing that again. We're waiting for you. God's waiting for you to make a destiny decision. Hallelujah. Then knowing Jesus. Knowing Jesus. He'll pick you up. He'll pick you up and turn your life around. Come on. You ought to know him. You ought to know him. Get to know him. Get to know him. Right now. Right now, today. Listen, before we sing that chorus, let me just break it down one more time. I, I told you one of the reasons I love Jesus is because he gives he has integrity. He gives you the fine print up front. He tells you the cost of discipleship, but I don't want you to miss the, the, the opportunity cost if you don't say yes. You know, opportunity cost means if if I fail to seize what's available to me, then I miss out on all this stuff. Listen, there is authority that God gives you when you surrender yourself to him. There's power that you receive when you become part of the body of Christ that's called the church. And, and when, you, when you fail to say yes, that means I'm going to be satisfied, stuck where I've been. The Bible says the day you hear my voice, harder not your heart. I want to encourage you right now. Don't let this moment pass you by. I believe God had you tune in because he had something for you. All you gotta do is say yes and watch him do a new thing in your life. Whoever you are, wherever you are, the good news is you don't have to get fixed up, cleaned up on your own. He'll take you like you are, but you won't remain like you are. Hallelujah. Come on, Mark down, my brother, my sister. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, sing that one more time. We're waiting, God's waiting. Come on. Hallelujah. We thank God for the eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. Receive now the benediction, grace, peace, and mercy from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide now with these your people, both now and forevermore. Repeat God said amen. Come on, say it again. Say one more time. God bless you as you go. Kingdom. Hallelujah. Wasn't that an awesome word from our senior pastor? Wasn't that an awesome worship experience with our senior pastor and again, our brothers leading us in worship? We know uh, that we're in necessary endings. Don't forget though, last month we went through It's My Pleasure and we were serving and we still need people to serve. And all that you saw on today, all that you experienced through our website, through our new Kingdom Cares website, happens because we have awesome servant leaders who serve. And so I wanna encourage you even right now, before we leave to sign up to serve uh, here at Kingdom Fellowship. Our pastor says it all the time and he's totally correct that many hands make for light work. And so please make sure that you do that. The information is also found here on the screen for you to be able to serve. And of course, don't forget to follow us on all of our social media assets. Bible study is happening on this week on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And so don't forget to do that. And of course, uh, don't forget to invite somebody with you to worship on next week, whether you're coming in person uh, we've been having a good time in person or if you're watching online you can still invite somebody with you to worship and until we see you next week don't forget to remain kingdom focused
The Marriage Ministry presents Preparing for Marriage God's Way. A successful marriage requires quality preparation and revelation from God. So join us and uncover the ways that marriage can become a doorway to a closer walk with God and with each other. The winter session of this virtual premarital course will begin on Saturday, February 26th. Register today by texting the word marriage to 240-201-3300. Kingdom family, join us throughout the month of April as we occupy and celebrate the grand opening of our brand new Kingdom Worship Center. Two years of prayer, two years of giving, Two years of serving to the glory of God. Make sure to come out to our Good Friday service on April 15th and Easter Sunday services on April 17th. Later in the month, join us on April 29th for a consecration service with Bishop T.D. Jakes and gospel recording artist Hezekiah Walker. On April 30th, join us for our special dedication service of the Kingdom Worship Center and groundbreaking of the Kingdom Care Center with preaching from Bishop James LaVert Davis and guest psalmist Jonathan Nelson. And on May 1st, don't miss our first Holy Communion Sunday service with Bishop John Bryant. It's going to be a historic celebration you don't want to miss. Are you ready to occupy 